Assalamu alaikum guys, I hope that you are all having a lovely week. Now my week, or really the last two weeks, have been spent learning as much as I can about Syria because after my last video I got to thinking, I know a lot of Syrians and I know a bit about the crisis that's happening in Syria, I know about Aleppo soap, but what more do I know about Syria? And I've been reading as much as I can and watching as many videos as I can to learn a little bit more about Syria and what makes Syria so special. But instead of relaying a bunch of facts that I have learned off to you guys, I decided to focus in on something that I have personal experience with and something that is very specifically Syrian and very specifically Turkish as well. The Hammam. Now don't forget, donations are still needed in Syria and Turkey. The crisis is still going on. Houses are still falling down. So donations are going to continue to be needed in both Syria and Turkey. And I have included all the details for places that you can donate to both from abroad and from here in Jordan in the description box below. Born in the Ottoman era out of an appreciation for the Roman bath culture and the Islamic duty to be as clean as you possibly can be, came the Turkish baths. And by clean, I mean, you know that stuff skin, like it gets really, really dirty and things, and um, it can peel away in little wriggly gray worms. Well, they will remove that for you. Not the gray wriggly worms, I mean the skin altogether. Going to a Turkish bath or a hammam is an experience akin to being reborn. Not only will you be scrubbed within an inch of your being and leave much of your being behind on the table. But you will get to experience being roasted alive, being plunged into cold water, discarded, limp and lying half alive on hot stone before being manhandled or woman handled in a way that will humble you to your core. And you'll come out content like a little newborn with a dozy smile on your face while you sip mint tea, void of any dirt on your body or anything in your mind. Or at least that's what happened to me. The Turkish bath, as it is commonly known, is pretty much the same as the Syrian bath due to their shared histories. But the hammams are very famous in Damascus, where up until very recently, and I mean our grandparents' era, they were being used on a regular basis by all walks of life. The hammam represents a communal space for cleanliness, gossip, business transactions sometimes, and celebrations. Of course, the hammam is segregated based on gender, so the vibe inside is free of modesty, which adds to the general joy of going to the hammam. I read that in Damascus, where there are hammams going back to the 12th century, such as the Nur ad-Din hammam, or the Yalbugha, which was built by the Mamluks, and I know I'm butchering the words, I'm sorry. But I read that in Damascus, where they have this really strong history of hammams, the practice had died out for a while and then recently has resurfaced as a means of relief from the war and a way of communing and providing some kind of unity around this very central Syrian tradition. Before the war, there weren't many hammams in Jordan, perhaps none, I don't know, but it was very common for Jordanians to travel to Damascus and part of their tourist experience would be to go to the hammams. But over the past decade, hammams have started to appear in Amman and have been increasing in their popularity as more and more people from Damascus have settled here in Amman and here in Jordan. And now the Turkish baths have become a very popular pre-wedding celebration for Jordanians. And that is how I got my first and only experience of a Turkish hammam. It was this little underground place that you never would believe that there was a hammam there because it was in this residential area off the side of this little alleyway and very different from the pictures that I've been seeing of the hammams in Damascus which are a lot of them have very high ceilings and these domes with coloured glass letting light in from from above um, and very ornate tiles and all these small spaces and nooks and crannies and things I mean places that are going back hundreds of years thousands of years but this one led down into the basement of a residential building and inside there were all Arabic um, Arabic mattresses and like a communal area for people to sit in the cafeteria, like cafeteria, um, stocked with Turkish coffee, water obviously, <laughs> and mint tea and of course Red Bull. And there was a little stereo on the side as well for, for when the girls wanted to put music on and dance and yeah. 
So upon arriving, you're asked what kind of package you want to buy and they are really cheap. I mean, the place that we went to was cheap. You can go to really expensive places and hotels and things. We went to a cheap place. It was so good though. Don't knock it. And then you are led through to the heat room and I believe that that's the main difference between the Turkish baths and the Moroccan baths that you don't go to a sauna, you go to a hot room. So after getting very hot in there and at least one girl almost passing out, we regained consciousness in the very cool pool and then went and warmed up again by laying on these hot slabs of stone. Not like a bed, not something comfy, no cushions involved. No, this is actual stone that is burning to the touch and you have to lay down with your bones and like shoulder blades and your spine digging into the stone. <laughs> At first, it was extremely uncomfortable, but then when you get used to the idea that you're lying on a hot piece of stone and you're not actually being fried like Galea at Lahmer, it became kind of comfortable. And then shortly after that, we were called to the massage table, which is where things get interesting. And by table, I mean another slab of stone, just this one was higher. And this is where I learnt the full meaning of the phrase, giving yourself up to an experience. Like a semi-sadistic little girl might play with her rag doll at bath time. Your limbs are pulled about as if you have no joints. You are scrubbed within an inch of your life with what feels like a Brillo pad. And thumbs are dug so deep into your muscles that they reach the other side. I was so embarrassed by the whole experience that I couldn't even make eye contact with the woman afterwards. I just said, thank you. And I quickly scuttled off away from the chair. Let me tell you, it was an amazing experience. Like I'm joking when I say, the, well, I'm not joking because it really does feel like being scrubbed with a Brillo pad and kind of being beaten up a bit, but it's amazing. Afterwards, laying down on that hot rock again, I really did feel <laughs> reborn. And then I got home to reality and I had crying babies around me and a house to clean. And I remember saying to my husband, I mean, I'm going back five years ago. All of this is very distant in my memory, but I remember saying to my husband, I need to do that every single month like this this has to happen every month for my soul like this was like i feel like rejuvenated got a bit excited there sorry have i been back again since no i have not but do i think that this should be part of everybody's self-care regime yes i do now having said all of that i really really want to do it again guys if you have recommendations for a an affordable hammam i'm not talking like thousand and one nights hotel an affordable hammam experience here in Amman, please tell me because I think that I need to go and do it again soon. And that is the end of today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I am currently sitting in the coldest room in the house to film this. I can't feel my feet. I think you can hear like I'm, I, I'm, my sinuses have filled up since I've been <laughs> Here. I'm gonna go and get warm now. I will see you guys next week. I hope that you all have a beautiful weekend and a beautiful week. Masalama, take care, bye bye.